A recent map of southern New Mexico shows the routes of two major railroads in the state. The Santa Fe along Interstate 25 on to Albuquerque and the Southern Pacific along US 64 through El Magordo and Carrizozo. The map showed a connection to Cloudcroft in the Sacramento Mountains. Interchanges were active junctions where railroads dropped off freights, machinery, and fuel and was transported by rail to cities and to active logging companies operating in the mountains. Railroad layouts were able to include a variety of rolling stock in at these interchanges. When I expanded the interchange on my layout, I added a small stockyard in the interchange that was cattle ranching in the area at the time and railroads were required to have the livestock fed at appropriate intervals. Only a short segment of the Southern Pacific track is modeled on my EPSW railroad, but it is the busy interchange point for traffic coming down from the peak and going up to Cloudcroft. The westbound traffic was already modeled, but the eastbound traffic needed a bridge to transit the ravine that was also a maintenance access path to the El Magordo station in town. I did not want to create an obstacle when maintenance was required. The solution was a sturdy bridge that could be easily removed. Plastic model bridges were attractive but couldn't take the abuse. But if I built a bridge on a 1 by 2 inch board that fit into slots in the table, plastic stringers were glued into the slots in the wood base and the bridge superstructure was built on top of the stringers. The base was painted black and quarter inch plywood was added to the ends and that was used to lift the bridge. Track was added to match the elevation and metal plates formed a V to guide the alignment of the track. Now a 30 foot section of the bridge was removed to match the 18 inch opening. Feeder leads were added and plugged into a common electrical receptacle. The bridge could be easily removed and safely replaced. Now the layout started on a 4x8 foot table next to a 4x6 foot table and subsequently grew along my basement wall in a standard manner. Permit, permit access to all sides of the layout, the table was positioned 18 inches away from the wall. The scenery on the table is blended into the murals on the wall. The gap behind the table is not noticeable to the viewer. Meanwhile, back in the town of El Magordo, the town was turning into a city. Bachman released a building model that was used by railroads and lumber companies to house employees. The buildings were of cheap construction and spanned the period from 1890 to the present time. Since the period I model was the early 1900s, the buildings could coexist with dance halls and horse stables. The town started to add sidewalks and paved roads, so I added these to the layout. I also moved the shelter from the excursion cars away from the station and relocated the engine house to the interchange yard. Excursion cars were popular and a trip up the mountain was appreciated during hot summer days. The traffic in the El Magordo yard was increasing. It included passenger trips, timber deliveries to El Magordo lumber, livestock traffic, freight, machinery deliveries to cloud crop, land and lumber, and coal and oil deliveries. It was becoming a chore to manage the traffic up and down the mountain. With four freight engines operating out of the yard, two engines in the logging camp, and a passenger train to keep on schedule, you will need modern technology to manage a 1900s railroad. Now, Railroads don't send their engines out at the whims of some operator with hope that they can pick up passengers or freight. So why should a model railroad run that way? Orders should flow from customer ship orders. Freight travel along standard routes. Then ship releases can be scheduled and trains assembled in the yard and sent on their way. I am developing a database that receives feedback from the CTI computer program that runs the model railroad. 
the route selected on the layout can represent customer deliveries and movements of freight. Waybills can be generated to track deliveries and keep track of revenue. Then we can begin operating the way actual railroads operated. So that's the challenge. And we will see how we meet the challenge in our next video of the EPSW operating in the Sacramento Mountains.